Hello, dear viewers. You're watching every TV English news broadcast with me, your reporter, Basabe Tahle. Let us start with today's major headlines. One patient diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests carried out today. Call for increased voluntary blood donation. Gunman kills three people at Maryland factory. And Syria's Damascus airport flight suspended after Israeli attack. On your local news, we have an announcement from the Minister of Health. One patient has been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests is carried out today at testing station in the central region. On the other hand, one patient who has been receiving medical treatment in hospital in the central region has recovered fully and has been discharged from the facility. The total number of recovered patients has accordingly increased to 9,661, while the number of deaths stands at 103. The total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has increased to 9,769. Minister of Health Asmara, June 10, 2022. Proceeding with your news, voluntary blood donation is being conducted in connection with 14 June International Blood Donation Day. Commending the initiative by members of Mera's Cultural Troop to voluntarily donate blood in connection with 20 June Martyrs Day, Nurse Owa Johannes, head of blood donation service at the National Blood Transfusion Service, called on the public to follow the noble example and voluntarily donate blood with a view to save lives with their renewable blood indicating that the National Blood Transfusion Service planned this year to collect about 12,000 bags of blood and that so far 6,000 bags of blood have been collected, Nurse Owai said that the donation has increased by 98% compared to that of the first half of 2022. Mr. Yasin Abdullah, member of the National Voluntary Blood Donors Association, on his part said that the association will exert strong effort to increase the number of members of the association with a view to enrich the National Blood Transfusion Service and thereby save lives with their blood. On your last local news, nurse Afwarki Isak, head of Hali Mental Health Station, Elaber Al Sabzon, reported that the health station is rendering commendable health service in general and that of prenatal treatment. Indicating that as a result of the sustainable awareness raising activities, pregnant women are regularly visiting the health station, nurse Afwarki said that the number of pregnant women visiting the health station for a checkup has increased from 76% to 89%. Nurse Afwarki further noted that the foot doctors in remote areas of the subzone are significantly contributing in the effort to control malaria and as a result, the prevalence of the disease has been reduced significantly. Nurse Afwarki also said that as a result of the sustainable environmental sanitation activities that the residents are conducting, the prevalence of communicable diseases that occur due to the lack of sanitation have been reduced. Dear viewers, do stay with us for the international news after the short break. Welcome back. On your international news, a gunman has opened fire on his co-workers at the manufacturing facility in northern Maryland, United States, killing at least three people and critically wounding a fourth before being taken into custody after a shootout with police. Washington County Sheriff Doug Mullender said police responded to reports of an active gunman at Columbia Machine in Smithsburg at about 2.30 p.m. yesterday. According to County Sheriff, three victims were found dead and a fourth victim was critically injured. However, there are no reports regarding the circumstances or possible motives behind the attack. The 23-year-old assailant, who was not identified by police, opened fire using a semi-automatic pistol and then fled in a vehicle before authorities arrived at the scene. 
He was tracked down and wounded in an exchange of gunfire with a Maryland state trooper. Both the suspect and the trooper were then taken to a local hospital for treatment. A Columbia Machine spokesperson said the company was cooperating with the authorities in their probe in the shooting, but declined to comment further. On today's last news, Syria has suspended all flights at Damascus International Airport after what a pro-government newspaper said was an Israeli air attack near the facility. al a newspaper said that today's attack left the runaway at the airport damaged without giving further detail. Syrian state news agency Sana did not mention a strike but said that flights had been suspended because, quote-unquote, some technical equipment stopped functioning at the airport. The announcement came after state media reported that an Israeli missile had hit several targets in the Syrian capital Damascus, injuring at least one civilian earlier today. According to Sana, Syrian government air defenses intercepted most of the missiles while some reached their target. Since Syria's civil war started in 2011, Israel is believed to have carried out hundreds of air attacks. The attacks are an attempt to prevent Iran-backed forces in Syria as well as Hezbollah fighters from gaining more strength in Syria and potentially attacking Israel. The conflict in Syria has killed nearly half a million people and displaced half of the country's population. You're still watching every TV, dear viewers, and now recap of today's major headlines. One patient diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests carried out today. Call for reinforced, rather increased, voluntary blood donation. Gunman kills three people at Maryland factory. And Syria's Damascus airport flight suspended after Israeli attack. Dear viewers, that was all for today. Thanks for watching.